All right, here we go. Stream the Machine, episode 34, with better video than ever. Uh, brought to you by Minicam. No, just kidding. Uh, starts now. When you get hold of the Nintendo Entertainment System, when you master Rob the video robot and meet the challenge of Gyromite, when you shoot the light-sensing zapper, when you play the system with the most arcade hits, you're playing with power. The Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, you're playing with power. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Tony. Don't slam the f***ing door. You're listening to a Fly Science Productions podcast. Welcome to Stream the Machine. Welcome to the show, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Um, let me make sure. I've got everything in a different spot now, because I have a new setup since last time. Um, I added a second second monitor uh, to help out with the, the new things we were trying to do with the show. And uh, it means all my stuff's kind of jumbled and not where it normally is, but uh, my video feed's being goofy and whatever. I hate it. I hate technology, but I love it at the same time. I'm addicted. Uh, welcome back to Stream the Machine. Uh, I am Jake, your co-host, or rather your host. With me is Tony, Tony De Palma, the legendary Tony. How are you doing today? Doing better than I've been recently, but yeah, recovering from a cold, but I think I can keep it under wraps. Uh, we're glad to have you back, and sorry you haven't been feeling well. Um, but you know, um, even, you know, as great as Ross is, and Ross is great, and there's nothing, nothing bad about him, is, uh... Grazy is it never never feels as good as it does to have the the full cast reunited. So here mm-hmm. we are, we're back. We've we've got everybody, and I'm excited. So um, a couple things here at the top of the show. Let's see. I've got my notes on this screen, so we'll see how this works. Uh, December six. I don't know if I said that. Everyone knows that. Uh, if you want to leave us reviews for, if you want to help out the show, rather leave us reviews on iTunes. That stuff's good, uh, even if it's a bad review, because it helps. The criticism helps us learn and uh improve the show um if you want to know what the easiest way to help out with the show is if you're some people say sometimes like oh i want to sponsor a segment or uh you know what is patreon i i I want to know how i can help out and um honestly the easiest thing to do is to share the things that we post for the show uh on facebook and on twitter and any other social media that you might use um while you know some sort of monetary compensation sure is is nice and helps i guess in the long run it doesn't get more people listening to the show uh getting the word out there does so if if you want to really help out you know just spread everything on facebook and whatnot and annoy your friends with us we'll hopefully make them eventually uh through submission listen to the show um (laughs) stockholm syndrome (laughs) pretty much eventually all right, well, I guess that's all I had. I don't know if I like having notes over there, so I'm going to move over here for now. Um, it, was, it was a busy week. It was a busy week. So I've, I've talked about uh, – I don't know – well, I don't know how much I've talked about it in the past. Um, so I work I work at a, a nameless company uh, that does computer upgrades. Um, mm-hmm. We put out – you know, people make orders. They basically say, I want this computer with this RAM and this whatever, and that, that we do their custom orders. And, um, we haven't been that busy over the holiday season yet. I mean, it's supposed to be busy, but it hasn't been. And then when we got back on Monday, there were like four times the amount of orders because I think, I mean, we had Thanksgiving last week, so we had Friday off and I guess Black Friday, everyone was just ordering stuff or, you know, whatever. I don't know if we had Mm -hmm. the sales or not. We must have, but... This week was crunch time, and we had to do get out. Gee, I think a couple days we got out like twice the amount of orders that we had was like our personal best for the last year. Uh, wow. wow, yeah, like crushed it almost by double because they had so many people working on things and trying to get through them all. And it was impressive. It was a lot of work, but uh, I'm glad for that to finally be over. We've kind of caught up. We're not we're not perfectly caught up yet, but uh, 
I think we're there. Or like getting closer at least. Much better than where we were before. Um nice. but uh I've I've last week I mentioned Dragon Age. I don't know how much I had mentioned it and Tony and I really haven't talked about Dragon Age yet. Um at least not a lot. Uh really, really good. Really, really loving it. Played a lot more last Saturday and uh last Sunday. Um but now I'm taking a break from it because I played a lot last mm. last week. So I've decided to sort of relax and try some other games out. Um, I'm playing the Stick of Truth, which is the Who is that? South Park RPG. Now, okay, so the only reason I have it is because it went on sale um, mm-hmm. for $13. And I told myself before, uh, as interesting as it looked, and it was made by a developer I liked, and you know, I've never really been a huge South Park fan. So yeah. it was kind of like, well, uh, I don't know. For forty dollars or whatever it was, I, I I didn't necessarily think it was going to be worth it, but I went for it. It was like thirteen, cool. I can finally get it. It is really really good. Um, I don't know if I would recommend it for the forty dollars because I think it's probably like a fifteen hour game and going to be done. Um, and if you don't like South Park or RPGs, then you're definitely not going to like it. So I wouldn't recommend it to those people either. But if if you are even if you're unsure and you're like eh. I've never really watched South because that's where I'm at. I've never really watched South Park. I've seen a couple episodes. Um, it was something I really couldn't watch when I was growing up, and so I never got to. And the, the humor occasionally was just really, really crude, and I wasn't into it. Um, it's kind of so. There's, there's two shows that people have recommended to me over the years that I've just been like, eh, not my thing. Um, Always Sunny in Philadelphia, and oh, and and South Park, and I've heard both are very good. And um, I probably would like Always Sunny a little more than South Park, but um, I've seen just a little bit of both shows and have not been that interested. I'm willing to give both of them a try again. I just haven't gotten around to it. But after playing some of this game and it being absolutely hilarious, having really great gameplay, um, I have decided to watch a little bit of South Park to to see what I think of it. Um, I've started in the first season, and of course the first season of a lot of shows is pretty... um, pretty hit and miss so so yeah. so far i'm not uh I'm particularly impressed but um the game is really good it was, i mean it's something i like look forward to playing because i know i'm going to be entertained as i watch it because it's just <laughs> absurdity after absurdity and just hilarious things that you would not really expect i guess to to uh see in a game so it's a lot of fun um let's see yeah, i'm else. probably in the same boat or i've seen a few episodes of south park Mm-hmm. I've seen clips, um, and I understand some like references right. to the show, but I've never really watched it, yeah, like it, steadily. I, you know, and I, I was trying to, th- you know, I think a, a major part of it for me was just like I said, not being able to really to watch it. You know, it's one of those things I, sh- I shouldn't watch because it was just, yeah, it was so so pushing the grounds and everything else, and but. Uh, now that I guess I'm finally old enough to to watch South Park, I'm giving a shot. Big boy now. I know. Um, Ross. So Ross Bays, our very own Ross Bays, our uh, Carmified correspondent. Our, He's our, ours. No one else. No one else is. And you know what? I just realized by being our Carmified correspondent, that makes him our KFC. Uh, <laughs> so that's so I'm going to refer to him as from now on. Um, he asked me before the show. He said, "Hey." Uh, Assassin's Creed, and he gave me three titles, and he asked me which one just to play. Like, he has these, which one do I recommend? Not necessarily regarding, you know, like, oh, you need to play the one before this one because, you know, it comes chronologically first, but just which is better out of these? Like, that overpowers any kind of, like, oh, well, you should probably watch, you know, play the series for, you know, that kind of thing. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Uh, Assassin's Creed Revelations or Assassin's Creed 3 and being as Tony has played I believe these um, or at least one or two of them because um, we've uh, he's uh, the when I think of Assassin's Creed usually Tony is the first guy I think of because at the time at least <laughs> um, you were quite into them so um, I gave him my answer um, I am interested in what your answer to him would be if, if Ross says hey here's the three I got I'm looking for the best bang for, you know, uh, I wrote, 
bro bro the bro the hood i forgot an r in there here we go anyways brothhood brothhood (laughs) Uh, i would say what would you recommend really okay brotherhood i like the whole aspect of well brotherhood this i guess (laughs) (laughs) right um brotherhood's a very good one and i told him it's probably considered i think to be the best of I mean, the best of the series prior to, like, Assassin's Creed 4, because I think a lot of people like Black Flag. Um, but I think Brotherhood's generally considered to be a highlight. Revelations was good, but it's sort of the end of the story, so it's very just kind of, like, mellowing out. Um, mm-hmm. so and I mean, they made three games out of the game they originally intended only to be one. Right. Um, so, I mean, by the third one, it's, it kind of got a little draggy and like it's still set in like the same time period so they're making like the upgrades mm-hmm. and like like in all his armor stuff we're just like kind of starting to stretch i felt right and i mean it's yeah so you know you have uh the first one taking place in israel and i'm trying to think of the other two cities uh acre jerusalem was it not israel maybe it was jerusalem i'm thinking of. it was jerusalem <laughs> one of those religious cities um uh except Israel is in a city, but um Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> showing off my geography here. Uh and then you go to two, which takes place in th- and so two is a highlight for me because it takes place in three different cities. Venice, uh I don't remember the other two. Venice <laughs> is one of them. What were the other two cities? Oh my goodness. Florence? I think home? so. I think so. At least it sounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, Florentine. Flor- I don't know. Something. Uh, Anyways, don't. Venice was one of them. <laughs> um, and so that was fun. And then you go to three and it's in Rome. And then you go to four and, or sorry, um, Revelations. And that takes place in Constantinople. Um, and it was just all kind of uh, not really changing the scenery too much. And then you go to three and. Three was again. I actually really like three. Not a lot of people like three. Um, I liked it. I see, and I liked it too. The people I've talked to have said, "Ah, oh, yeah, I started it and then I stopped because the I didn't like the story and I didn't like this." And I actually found the story interesting. I actually liked Connor as a character. Um, you know, sort of being a bastard child of a, a Native American and a and a British man and you know it yeah. it just it was interesting to me to see him trying to figure out you know the heritage to embrace and um given that's not spoilers to anybody that's all stuff you figure out within like the first couple hours of the game so relax well, not, like reading on the back of the book right. <laughs> I'm not spoiling anything or just for anybody reading that his name like just knowing his name is Connor Kenway and he's a native american you can kind of put together, right? <laughs> Maybe definitely was not uh, his birth name. Um, so yeah, it. Uh, I don't know. I I told him that I really liked three, just because three uses the. It's the first time they used the new engine, um, and so it looks a lot smoother. And um, but I also told him that Brotherhood would probably be the pick. So, anyways, there's there's your long answer, Ross. Uh, Brotherhood definitely seems to be the. Yeah, I've the bought. This is the only. Assassin's Creed game I have a bottom launch was Assassin's Creed Unity. All the I, other ones I bought like midnight. Right. Day. I'm I don't know, I'm just not I'm not ready for it, you know? Um Yeah. That's kinda like I'm starting to get kind of burnt out. Mm-hmm. Which is unfortunate. I'm out every year. Um yeah. I mean they're still good, but I'm just like I know it's different stories and missions, but I'm like, man, I've played this it feels like I've played this game mm-hmm. so much. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm trying to think. I haven't even gotten through 4, which is why I wouldn't have bought it yet. But um, that, And then the fact that Rogue comes out on the old consoles um, only, I think. I don't even know if that mm-hmm. one's on PC. Um, I don't think it is. It's kind of like... So if I'm really trying to be the completionist, I have to... I mean, I still have my older systems, but... I don't know. It's just it, it feels like they're doing weird stuff. I'm glad that they're able to present another game, another full size AAA game, but dropping two Assassin's Creeds on the same day, like I think we even talked about it on the show a week ago. Like it's just crazy. But you know what are you gonna do? Um, I know it's really just a cash cow. Um, 
So we'll briefly skip over the or briefly talk about it. The Metal Gear Online trailer dropped last night. Uh, there was a Game Awards show in Las Vegas, and uh, they had Kiefer and Kojima come out and say, "Hey, love Metal Gear Solid Five. It's awesome. Here's the gameplay trailer for the for the online." And it hadn't been dropped yet. Um, awesome stuff. Looks really cool, which I knew it was going to look cool, so I wasn't that surprised by that. But the trailer looks really really good so i am excited to see what more they bring from that because now they're sort of officially talking about it before they weren't they were just saying um yeah metal gear online is going to be a thing but we haven't really released any information about it and now they have so now they're going to continue forward and um do what they can about that and i'm excited um the last thing that we're doing talking about uh video games here and if really what this is is a diversionary tactic so if twitch was like oh they're about to start their show and they tuned in for the first 15 minutes they think we're still a video game podcast and then we can now we can switch to the uh the other stuff so we don't get booted off um are you still playing destiny i am stalling playing destiny right now okay because my brother has destiny uh-huh. And we're our schedules aren't lining up really well right now, and we've still yet to play together. And we're right now, we're like about at the same level. Okay. So I'm stalling until Thursday, right on, which is a weird random day. But it's <laughs> when we're both done with finals. Nice. And we're both going to try to crank it out. And cool. Then I'll make sure you get it back. No, oh, I'm not even worried about that. Um, you can. I mean, honestly. I mean, keep it. I, I don't. I, I did not have fun as much fun with that game after I'd reached a certain point. So at this point, I have mm-hmm. no. I have no reason to have it. Re- legitimately, it is yours, <laughs> unless you hate it, and then you can send it back, and I'll turn it in for money or something. But <laughs> if you enjoy it, you keep it because I'd much rather someone get worth out of it. And 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 I definitely wasn't. But that was just it was just a personal thing. There's a lot of people still playing, so. Um, I was just curious because it's been a while. They've had updates. They've changed the things since I've played. I was curious yeah. to 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 see if there was someone that I knew still playing. Because actually, my nephew and my other buddy that played actually Keith, uh, they are no longer playing Destiny. So um, I was just curious because I hadn't heard about it in a while. Yeah, I think the last I've seen read about the couple of the last like updates. The last one I was, I guess took or was involved with was when I changed some stats on some guns. Okay. So they just made like I think they nerfed assault rifles and beefed up scout rifles or something. Right. I remember reading about that and I think reducing so range like, on shotguns and stuff. Or not a shotgun. Is there shotguns? Yeah, I never used one, but like I logged on and like I had like died on a mission, which is where I stopped. And then I did the same mission again, and all of a sudden my guns were doing better. I was like, what? <laughs> right. Those updates will get you. So, um, cool. Well, that's exciting. Well, now that all of the game talk is over. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so I've got a Christmas party to go to tonight, and I forgot. I forgot that I said <laughs> I would go. So it's you almost know, as if I'm... I, I, uh, it's a bummer because actually last week when I was asked if I wanted to go... Um, is a, is a friend of Rachel's, and uh, Ross will be going as well, so it won't be a total total loss. But um, I was I was cool with it. I was like, all right, sweet. And then I had a really full, busy work week, and I totally was not thinking about it because it's not something I'd be thinking about. God, my eyes irritating me. Um, and so then last night she's making cookies and says something, and she's like, "So are you still cool for the party tomorrow?" And I'm like, "Damn it." <laughs> I forgot. So uh, that is why we'll be spending my night. Um, it could be much worse. Could be much worse. So it's, uh, you know, I, I'll I'll figure it out. I think Ross is bringing some cider, and so I'll just probably sip on some cider and talk to Ross and relax, hang in a corner somewhere. Um, I'm going, oh, while you're doing that, mm-hmm. I'll be. Oh yes. At Riff Raff. Riff Raff, uh, which, as I've seen before the show, um, <laughs> is a trip. The guy definitely yeah. uh, has has a uniqueness about him. In a, in a yeah, I'm not way. really going for his musical talent. <sighs> I, can, I can imagine. <laughs> there's a bunch, like a bunch of my friends are going, 
and it's going to be hype. I'm curious. So when you say that, I'm curious how many people actually listen to his stuff because it's ridiculous or because they actually enjoy it. And I'm like, see, that's where I think he like sucks you in by when you first listen to it. You're like, man, this is kind of ridiculous and really strange, but it's kind of fun. Right. And then the more you listen to it, you're like, man, this all kind of makes sense in a really <laughs> extravagant way. Like, right. I can't tell if it's by accident or if he's really like that Just, creative with lyrics, that stuff right. matches up. And like you kind of, after you think about it, you're like, wow, that makes sense. But I'm not sure if it's intentional or not. That's funny. It takes a little, like, you start listening. I started listening to it as a joke. Mm -hmm. I was like, ha, it's funny. And I was like, hey, I'll just it's listen to this album. Starting to, have, starting to like, catch now. This is just weird. Yeah. That's how it works. That's how they do it. <clears throat> he's their second in. On all of his social media, I follow him in, like, I think on Instagram. Because that's where he posts, like, when he's going to have concerts. Right. And every little caption he does, it's all caps. <laughs> Except for the eyes, every eye is lowercase. It's so like in riffraff, it's all uppercase letters except for the eyes. Weird, huh? That's interesting. He's, a, he's an extravagant guy. Definitely seems like it. Um, I don't know if we talked about it last show, Ross and I. Um, and I honestly don't remember when it dropped. If it was last Sunday, but the new Star Wars trailer has been released or at least a teaser that's what i would call it if it was a trailer it'd be a horrible trailer but it's a teaser so it doesn't it's not supposed to release m much information um but uh yeah you know honestly i don't even really know what it shows besides a black stormtrooper that everyone got angry about because i don't understand why people are angry well, about that well because okay and it has nothing to do with race on as surprisingly it has to do with i believe the fact that Django fett was the one who got cloned or boba whatever one of them was the original like clone trooper stormtrooper but uh-huh that's clone troopers not stormtroopers. Well, okay, but I think that's what they turned. I think that's what they turned into. Was the Clone Wars? They turned in. They they do. They were the stormtroopers, and then after that, they were just. They're like, all right, well, we don't know what to do. And Vader hired them all to work for his. His thing. So I I think that they're supposed to be, theoretically, they're all supposed to look like. Uh, Boba Fett or talk like him too because there's people who are like why like when the when they came out the prequels they're like well what about the ones that don't sound like him in all of the old movies it's because George Lucas wasn't planning on it you know <laughs> just making stuff as he goes um so I don't think it had anything to do with race like oh my gosh that guy's a black guy how could he be a stormtrooper I, th I think what? yeah I know I because I mean that would have been stupid I think it was literally just he doesn't look like Django Fett or whatever and no so, see, I I read into it um, a little bit. The clones, clones were actually phased out of the regiment hmm. in between, like episode three and episode four. Because okay. when in the second movie, when they're talking about the clones, they mention like the accelerated aging process. Right. So like they're born to grow up super fast. Right. But then that also means they die out quickly. They age super fast. So like they weren't like sustainable. So then once they started their empire, they could actually recruit actual regular soldiers. I guess that makes sense. Um, and that's, that's actually what that's actually like the extended universe canon. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I bet there's a large part of people who just didn't, who didn't care and just, they yeah. didn't, they either, or they just didn't read into it. F those guys, who cares? Who cares about a dude who's black or white or whatever being a stormtrooper? Even if a white guy was a stormtrooper, I don't even think Django was was white. I think he was of a different ethnicity. Uh -huh. um, I think he was, yeah. I don't know what he was. He could have been something else, but I, he seemed like something else. He was a bounty hunter. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Django Fett, did you play, there was like an old PS2 game, I think like Star Wars Bounty Hunter, and you got to play as Django Fett. I remember it. Um, it was awesome. Hold on a second. Was Kid it me remembers it being awesome. Let's see. It wasn't Republic Commando, was it? Or was it Bounty no. Hunter? That was like a cooperative game. Okay. Yeah, because that looks like there's guns in there. 
Yeah, it might have just been called Bounty Hunter. I do remember it. I don't remember playing it. Um, wow, 10 out of 10 on Steam? That's insane. People must love that game. Um, Star Wars Bounty Hunter? Is that it? On Steam? <laughs> wow, so, well, Republic Commando is on Steam, and it's, oh, it's, oh my gosh, the reviews for it are absolutely insane. That's crazy. Yeah, Star Wars Bounty Hunter is the name of it. Okay. I think I've only seen it. I hadn't actually played it. I wasn't really into Star Wars at the time. Let's see. Oh. Okay, yeah, that does look super familiar now. Seems like it would be a lot of fun. You didn't get a lot of flying games in the PS2 era. Um, Or at least uh, games that you could move around in three dimensions. Um, Go ahead. Do you care? Do you have a. I feel like you probably wouldn't have a preference regarding the lightsaber. Because I know it's a big issue. Oh, Some right. People, the one with the... Just as much as the Black Storm looks Looks like a Claymore is what people were saying. Like a Claymore sword because it has the... Yeah. Now, it made me laugh. It did. When I saw it, it made me... Um, it just made me laugh because it almost seemed like a joke. Because it just goes... And has the two little ones pop out. And I was just like, okay... <laughs> Um, do I ultimately care? I don't because I don't, I don't think I have enough stock or enough care in the, in the Star Wars universe to really think it matters. But, um, it did make me laugh a little bit. Now there's, it's been like meme city since that happened. I don't know if you've seen like the gifs and, um, stuff. It's, it's actually really funny to see, uh, what some of that stuff is, but, um, uh, yeah, I wonder, hold on, I wonder, I'm going to try something here. I'm going to try something a little radical on the show, everybody who's listening in. Um, Force Chains, bro. Awakens Lightsaber. Um, for the record, anyone listening in who's like, why the hell does it say my mini, or minicam.com? Don't go there, don't do whatever. It's a stupid watermark for this program so I can get something to work. I'm going to try and figure out an ish, uh, a fix next weekend, or before next weekend. Anyways, so here's what I'm going to do. Since I've since everything's a video feed now, I'm going to pull up this picture, and then I'm going to try to bring it into the the uh, the t- Twitch. What am I doing here? Window. Oh, I was going to try and add it to Twitch real quick. Let's see if this works. Oh, sure doesn't look like it's going to do it. This is. Ah, this is this is not gonna work. I don't think. Nope, forget it. It's it's old. And you know what I just realized? I am totally not running the MixLR feed. So for all, all you suckers that uh, listen to MixLR, eat it. it. Yeah, I know. All right, so I am starting MixLR right now. So if anyone, uh, I feel bad. Of course, if they went to MixLR and found out it wasn't working. Um, I'm sure they weren't actually sitting there waiting for it to work, but it is up and running now. <laughs> but it just occurred to me that I hadn't uh, hadn't been running it. So, um, yeah. So, anyways, we've got more important things to talk about than nerd stuff, which is actually not true because we're going to talk about nerd stuff here in the next segment. But uh, here we go. Yeah. Four, oh, four, error. Page not found. Alrighty. Well, uh, big news uh, dropping in the geek world at the moment um suicide squad is a dc comic uh comic crew really um that they've just now announced the actors for they were gonna make it into a movie um see what we got here so the cast of warner brothers and david ayer's adaptation of the dc comics suicide squad has been revealed the star-studded roster will include jared leto as the joker will smith as deadshot Tom Hardy is Rick Flag, which I am unfamiliar with Rick Flag. I don't know who that is. Um, Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn, which is uh, the, the Joker's main squeeze, the chick. Um, Jay Courtney as Boomerang. Don't know who that is. And Cara Delevingne as Enchantress. And I don't know who that is either. But um, yeah, so... 
big names in Jared Leto, Will Smith, and Tom Hardy. At least Will Smith and Tom Hardy. Jared Leto is becoming bigger as they go. Um, let me finish the article here, I guess. Many of these names have been rumored for the project in recent weeks, but now we have confirmation on their casting, Suicide Squad, which focuses on a team of supervillains who are brought together by the government for the toughest of missions. It's scheduled for release on August 5th, 2016. Production is scheduled to begin in April in Toronto. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Trying to see if there's anything else to say here. Let's see. The Warner Brothers roots are deep on this one. Uh, Warner Brothers president Greg Silverman said in a statement, We are looking forward to this terrific ensemble under David Ayer's amazing guidance. guidance rather, uh, Give new meaning to what it means to be a villain and what it means to be a hero. The character of Amanda Waller still needs to be cast. She is the sort of Nick Fury who brings the team together and was uh, previously played by Angela Bassett in Green Lantern. Um Viola Davis, Octavia Spencer, and Oprah Winfrey are all said to be on the studio's shortlist for the part. Uh, with Winfrey being their first choice. Honestly, like, I watched all, like, the Justice League animated series. Mm-hmm. And all, like, the Young Justice, all that, all that right. jazz. <laughs> and Oprah Winfrey actually probably would fit Amanda Waller pretty good. You think so? Um... Like, I know a lot of people are like, what? But, I mean, it's kind of like... If she can be kind of stern and mean, she would probably be pretty, like... Right. And so, yeah, I mean, they need an authoritative um, figure, it seems like, is what I gathered from that, especially if you're going to be the Nick Fury-ish person. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited for a few things. Uh, Cool on Tom Hardy, whatever. I feel like he can probably do whatever he wants. But obviously a lot of people are going to be looking for Jared Leto as the Joker. And wanting to know what he has to offer after having such a crazy Joker before with Heath Ledger. Um, and I sort just of, hope they don't. Obviously, people are going to compare him, compare Heath Ledger and Jared Leto's Joker, but I hope they like are nothing alike. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I'm hoping. Well, okay. So here's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that uh, Jared Leto's Joker will go back towards sort of a Nicholson of. Like- the boy. right of like the comic the the making the bad jokes the laughing the really being the eccentric joker heath ledger brought a bunch of realism to him of being more of a dark twisted making dark jokes and the joker still made dark jokes but it was i don't know I, it's it's one of the reasons why i was never super thrilled with L- ledger's uh presentation not he did a great job acting don't get me wrong there but his his type of Joker I didn't love, and it wasn't his fault. It was what Nolan was trying to do. They were trying to just bring realism to it all, and um, I liked the more comic-y, you know, like the Arkham Asylum, the Arkham City, the Arkham whatever Joker. That's just like, you know, the Mark Hamill Joker is is yeah. the Joker that is brilliant, in my opinion. And, of course, you can't get Mark Hamill to come and do him because the guy is probably 90 years old now, but... Um, and, you know, I, it'll be interesting to see. Um, also curious about Will Smith as Deadshot because I'm trying to think of the only other superhero movie he did, and that was Hancock, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did not see Hancock because I was I had already seen enough Will Smith movies by that point. But um, I liked Hancock. Was that? It wasn't like your generic superhero film, right? Was that um, any kind of Marvel, DC, or anything, or was that original? Um. I think it's a comic book, but I don't know if it's Marvel or DC. Let's see. Hancock. Let's see how we're doing on time here. We'll probably have to blow through a couple of these articles. Let's see. Um, not seeing anything here. Yeah, I don't think it is. Hmm. Interesting. Because I had thought I'd heard before someone say something about it being um, perhaps a Marvel film, but or not a Marvel film, but based on a Marvel character. But um, it, it is apparent that that is not the case. So yeah, that'll be exciting. Uh, new superhero things that is always cool. Um, I'm gonna. Is another head. Sorry, you're about to. Were you about to move on? Uh, sort of, but go right ahead because I'm gonna I skip one, the third article. One that got. Go ahead. Um, the Suicide Squad. There's already, like, a version of that on TV currently. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. In Arrow, there there was, like, a whole episode dedicated to the Suicide Squad. Hmm. 
with dead. It had Deadshot, Bronze Tiger, um, Amanda Waller, obviously.、I'm、trying to think of the last guy's name. I can't remember,、um, but they're all played by different actors, and it's obviously it's not a. I guess the only really one that's different is Deadshot, but it was, it's neat. It's、hmm. pretty much the same premise: bunch、right. of villains controlled by Argus to go take out bad guys. But I, like do, DC is like double dipping all their <laughs> a lot of their source material. They are, you know what? And <sighs> movies. It's well, and they're really trying to. Spread their presence, you know. The Shield、mm. came out, and or Agents of Shield came out, and it's crushing it for for Marvel. And so then they wanted to come out with Gotham, and I mean Arrow seems to be killing it.、Uh, they just want to compete, and unfortunately, Marvel's been working it longer than they have. But、um, well, I don't want to say that because the Batman movies were big before any like Spider Man or anything like that was big.、Um, Like、uh, talking about like Michael Keaton Batman and stuff like that, but it never Superman really. Superman one two and Superman Superman movies with uh, uh, Christopher Reeves Reeve yeah, rather, yeah.、Um, but yeah, so yeah, I mean the,、uh, DC seems to have had a presence for a while, but none of them I don't think really hit home until like Iron Man came along, and then Iron Man I think I mean we had good Spider Man movies with Sam Raimi, but. That th- those have never really been connected, and you come out along with Iron Man and freaking Thor's hammer at the end of the movie, and you're like, oh my gosh! And then, you know, then Thor comes out, and everyone loves that. And then at that point, the train had already been rolling. You just gotta, you know, and it's, I mean, it's working for him. So,、uh, yeah. it, it's it's it'll, it'll be interesting. I want to see DC be able to pump out stuff that's comparable.、Um, so, it, it well, it'll be exciting to see where this goes.、Uh, Apple patents and anti-falling phone technology, and you might be asking, "Well, what the heck does wh- what? I don't get it."、Uh, well, the U.S. and patent and、uh, trademark office has granted Apple U.S. the rights to patent a、uh, long number, which covers a protective mechanism for an electronic device. The patent itself is for a device that relies on sensors to monitor device positioning. In short, if you drop your iPhone, the phone will defy gravity and hit the floor in the safest way possible. Protecting the screen and、uh, important internal components. Now it might sound like magic.、Um, uh, quotes here:、uh, an electronic device, including a processor,、uh, a sensor, and a communication with the processor and a protective mechanism.、Uh, the protective mechanism is in doc-、uh, sorry is in communication with the processor and is configured to selectively alter a center of mass of the electronic device. Additionally, the electronic device also includes an enclosure configured、uh, to at least partially enclose the processor and the Sensor. The device works by performing rapid calculations to quickly reposition the eye device in mid-air freefall.、Um, the example the, pa- the patent gives is to use the monitor's motor functionality to adjust rotational velocity in hopes of preserving fragile components. Seems like a really useful, cool idea. Unsure of how well it would work, but I'm also not Apple, so I imagine they probably got the resources to. To look into something like this—that's crazy. Drop your phone, and all of a sudden, it's like vibrating midair or something. You know, like to like realign it. Yeah,、so、that's that it... all. It's basically, what they just said is basically the vibrate motor you have now, just a weight on a motor that just spins real fast. Right. They're talking about spinning that motor in the right direction to try to flip it. That's crazy, though.、Um, so, because、so, what it's going to do is it's going to, it's going to take, um, you know, it's going to. Figure out what, but by the accelerometer, <laughs> it's going to figure out what part of the phone is like closest to the ground, and、mm-hmm. then it's going to calculate how to spin it to get it, you know, wherever it needs to be to also try and protect the processor. Now, here's the next part that kind of makes me laugh. Depending on how many times the owner drops their device, the protective me- mechanism may start to remember how it was dropped previously to help with future calculations. So, the more you drop your phone. The safer it might drop the next time.、Uh, furthermore, if you own several、uh, several Apple devices, they'll communicate with one another. Meaning, if you drop your phone a lot, your iPad will be aware of that and will mimic the phone's trajectory should the iPad ever be dropped. <laughs>、um, I don't know. That's kind of funny to me, but、uh, it, you know, yeah, cool, cool. I, I guess protect your phones. So, but 
here's hoping they actually implement it. Yeah. Um, They're not just making a patent so someone else doesn't. Yeah. Uh, who who knows? That's that's a good point actually, because uh, that definitely can happen and does happen. I'm sure. Um, shit. Let's do. Uh, man, our intros are getting longer and longer. We're gonna do two articles today. Um, the first one is. Artist seeks crowdfunding. Wait, for, for any other news? Oh yes. Hey, thanks for the reminder. We have a bumper for that. This just in. In other news, I was moving so fast that I wasn't even thinking about bumpers. Um, artist seeks crowdfunding for a pizza bed. A uh, New York artist whose mock-up of a pizza bed went viral uh, is seeking crowdfunding to make this delicious-looking sleeping surface a reality. The pizza bed, dreamed up by Brooklyn artist Claire Manganiello, Manga, Manga Manganiello, I'm trying to figure out how I correctly pronounce that, but it's not going to happen, uh, is composed of sauce printed sheets, pillowcases designed to resemble the crust, and a duvet or a duvet, a duvet cover printed with a cheese and pepperoni design to turn any standard twin, full, queen, or king size bed into a sleepable, if not edible, pizza. Uh, it's 3 a.m. on a Sunday morning. I'm shivering on a Brooklyn street corner in the dead of winter, clutching a slice of pizza and wishing aloud that I could actually <laughs> crawl inside of it where it is safe and warm. Excuse me. Suddenly, somewhere deep... It is a quote, by the way. Suddenly, somewhere deep inside my frozen and beer-fueled brain, Pizza Bed was born. Later that morning, after some coffee and Photoshop, the design landed in the weird stuff section of my online portfolio. Manganiello uh, wrote it on the Kickstarter page. So this that's, that's what she wrote. For the Kickstarter description. Um, the artist said she decided to crown for the project when her design went viral about a year later. What? Took a year for that thing to go viral? Um, I decided it was time to make this dream a reality for all my pizza-loving brethren, she wrote. I am here because I love pizza and I want to sleep inside it. If you feel as strongly as I do about the most perfect food in the universe, then the pizza bed it is for you. The Kickstarter page is seeking to raise $125,000 by December 29th to put the pizza bed sets into production. The page has raised $16,000 by noon on Friday. Um, so, That's... it's... Well, here's... Here's my, my thing. Um, if it's not an actual pizza bed, not made from actual pizza... How does it need to cost one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars to get this going? Like, how about you just go? Can you? <laughs> I don't know. Like, you can't make custom sheets somewhere, or you can't get. I mean, I guess if you're gonna like really do it and try to make this, but who's who's gonna buy that? No one's gonna buy that because it... apparently one hundred and forty-three people. <laughs> what's so what's the, the Kickstarter page? What's the total at now? Um, sixteen five. So we're still there. Um, oh. I don't think it's going to make it. Yeah, Unless I doubt it. It suddenly becomes super viral, like even more viral. Well, you know what? Now that we've had it on the show, there's a good chance it'll probably make it and make it spot <laughs> after all of our listeners hear about the pizza bed. Um, see what I see. What I'm curious about is there's a little gif of how pizza bed works, right? And it shows like all the different ingredients of your pizza and what part they are. In that, it says it comes with two standard pillowcases, but in the picture on the top, there's three pillows that look like crust. Hmm. I feel like if there's only two, it wouldn't complete the crust across the bed on some larger beds. <laughs> and then it's not truly a pizza bed. Um, like, it's slacking. Yeah, it's... I don't really know, man. This is a trip. Uh, whatever. Power to you. Maybe it's like, like woven with fibers that smell like pizza. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I could do it. I think I would get sick of it real quick. Because I do like pizza. I like having pizza, but pizza all the time, man. I don't know. I'd Excuse me. I think I would get tired of it. Um, all right. Well, I'll, I'll let you pick this one. Uh, two <coughs> titles here. Um, you get to pick which one you think sounds more interesting. So the first one is teacher one for making a boy put uh, put his hands in the toilet. Or the second one is husband accused of assaulting wife with a McChicken. 
The what chicken? A, a Mick chicken. So McDonald's. Um, I'm gonna go. One sounds just ridiculous, and the other sounds just idiotic. So I feel like I'm gonna go with door number one. Door number one. We're going for the teacher who warned. Uh... Hands in the toilets. Okay. Um, load up the article. <clears throat> the parents of a Washington State eight-year-old ordered uh, to unclog a school toilet with his bare hands said the teacher should have gotten more than a warning. Artie and Lisa Adams said that they were shocked when their third-grade son came home from Scootney Springs Elementary in Othello and told them about his day at school. Quote, he said everything was good, but my teacher made me put my hands inside the toilet. We were like, what? Artie Adams told... Uh, Local news. Uh, I'm still speechless, Lisa says. Othello School District record state teacher Brent Taylor, 23-year-old veteran teacher. A veteran teacher at 23 years old? Nope. <laughs> I mean, how long? Oh, boy. Um, Trust me. I've been around teachers all my life. The, I know how they think. Yeah, there's... Oh, boy. That, by that meaning, they're um, better in, in being around them because they've been taught the past 15 I guess. 17 years. Um, 23-year-old veteran teacher ordered the boy to use his bare hands to unclog a toilet, saying it's nothing I haven't done before. Uh, Lisa Adams said other students teased her son about the incident, and he has since been transferred to another school. Damn, really? Um, Taylor was issued a warning letter in order to review a hygiene safety course he had taken just two months prior. Uh, <laughs> the boy's parents said they believe Taylor should have faced more severe penalties. Because... If he did it to our child, how many other kids has he done that to? Uh, Taylor, who declined to comment on the incident, was the subject of two other reprimands during the past 16 months, both uh, both involving high school girls. Taylor was accused of grabbing one of the girls who were serving as a teacher's assistant by the arm angrily. The other uh, girl reported she felt uncomfortable when Taylor tickled the back of her neck. Uh, by contrast, Jennifer Forshe, Forshe, a teacher at Broward Community Charter School West in Florida, was arrested in February on a charge of battery of a school she uh, battery on a child after she admitted to forcing a boy to use his bare hands to unclog a urinal. How do you clog a urinal? Unless you're doing things in a urinal that you shouldn't be doing. Yeah. Like if the, okay if in the urinal if he was like. Throwing garbage or fecal matter. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> if it was garbage, I would probably be like, yeah, you're grabbing that with your finger. Like, I, I could kind of see... I don't want to sound like a, a douche or anything, but if, like, a little kid was, like, throwing garbage in the urinal, I'd be like, yeah, grab that. Yeah, sure, sure. It, it, yeah. Like, um... But, I mean... A, Clogged toilets a different thing. It definitely is. There are other things in a clogged toilet that, uh, I mean, that could be a health, I mean, well, I mean, it's 100% a health issue. Um, you know, it's, they're not going <laughs> to, hopefully they aren't going to die from it. I mean, I'm sure there are some sort of illnesses or something you can gather, like the worst kind of Ebola or something, I don't know, but, um, there's, um, you know, there's definitely stuff to be worried about there. It, yeah, just a slap on the wrist. I mean, this is, I don't know. It's just ridiculous. Uh, government officials not having to answer for their transgressions. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of Would You Rather here, um, which I still don't have a theme for. So here is what I'm going to play. Toronto doesn't have bums. Alrighty. Um, so here we go. Uh, <clears throat> would you rather uh, be sick or have a computer virus? Um, well, I've been sick for like the past week. Right. So <laughs> I'm trying to think of like having the hassle with computer virus to be worth it to be healthy um I'm uh, it's I'm guessing we're not sure the severity um, but I'm guessing the severity of the sickness is the same as severity as the computer hmm 
Well, let's see. A it's computer like, virus really, really, really sick, or you have a really, really bad computer virus, or you just have a cold, or you just have like a little pop up stuff. Huh. Well, now I feel like I have to say that it would be a severe vi- a computer virus, but I'm trying to think what the equivalent would be for being sick. Ebola. That's awful. I guess if you would have Starts. to, wa- if you would have to wipe your computer in order to get rid of the virus. Um, which sometimes you have to do. Um, yeah, okay, so we'll say the flu, uh, you know, throwing up bad stuff for a week, or you have a virus on your computer that is going to require a a full wipe to get rid of without the ability to save the the files that you have. So you will have to sort of, you know, like factory reset or something. Um is the fact so like just the operating system reinstall like sort of yeah, but it since when when you do that you have to sort of format the drive and everything like that. So it literally you will lose what you have on your on your computer that isn't like on like a cloud server. What if I have two hard drives? For that reason, hmm. I have an SSD with all my applications and operating system, and then a one terabyte Western Digital Black Edition for all my games, movies, music, just raw files, not nothing installed. Right. Soundscape, um, yes. Hmm. Uh, I suppose we could say that uh, maybe the virus is only on the. The OS drive. I have two drives as well. I didn't think about that. Hmm. So I'll just do that. I'm comfortable enough with computers to be okay with getting a computer virus every now and then. Yeah, I think I would have to... Throwing up for a week would kind of be miserable. Yeah, I think I would go the same way just because I don't keep a lot of... I just just don't have files to keep on my computer. I'm not in school, so I don't keep a lot of stuff. Um... I would lose episodes of the show. Mate, well, no, those are on my my other drive as well. Um, and they're on the interwebs. Yeah, it's true. So I just excuse me would be able to redownload them if I had to. I wouldn't lose much. I guess computer virus would be the way to go. Let's see. Uh, oh wait, let's let's find out. So sixty percent would rather be sick than have wow. a computer virus, but it depends what they considered for their you know. Sickness versus virus, you know, uh, cold yeah. versus you know uh, anything. Some people here are saying cancer. Uh, I don't, I don't understand how that would have equated to a computer virus. So I'm not sure. It's like, yeah. Uh, let's see here. What is okay? Um, would you rather always say everything that is on your mind? So basically, having no social filter. Or never be able to speak again. Oh man, I don't not speak again. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be straight up. <sighs> so I mean, we everyone gets those random like outbursts. I don't know, but, but like, part of you is always like, "Go do that, do this, right? Say that." Yeah, I'm like, no, that's why on earth would I say that? <laughs> That bonnet looks disgusting. Right. Huh. Always say everything on your mind or never speak again. Uh. Yeah, I guess I would go with never never speak again. You could still do a lot of things and never speak yeah. again. Um, always saying what's you on your really mind. down a good, a good job if you speak your mind all the time. <laughs> That's like, true. Yeah, I got a, I got an issue. The movie we were seeing was too cold. <laughs> we'll get a jacket. <laughs> Why did you wait the entire length of the movie to tell us? So now we have to were refund you. Were you working ticket. that night? That happened. <laughs> I don't know. That I can't remember. Happened. Like that... this older this older couple came out. Yeah, the movie we were in was like super cold. Is there any way we can get our money back? I was like, oh sure. What time to start? It was like nine. Uh, like six fifteen. <laughs> like. 
show you what you got your money's worth. You sat through the movie. Right. Like, you watched it. Yeah. That's what you paid for. Uh, I hate it when people did that. That it was one of the things that made me most irritated. Or they'd come out, you know, and say, like, one of the speakers wasn't working for that entire show. And what I would say, you know, to sort of be passive aggressive would be, uh, Oh, you know what? I'm really sorry. Uh, next time, if you let us know as soon as the movie starts, we can actually fix that, and then you can watch your entire movie, and everything will be fine. And I'll, I'll tr- I would always try to make sure that they knew that if they had not been assholes, they could have come out <laughs> and said, "Hey, this isn't working," and I could have made their entire movie experience better. Um, just because it pissed. They're just like that movie wasn't very good. And I want my money back. Yeah. Another one, yeah. Like, why'd you sit all the way through? Now, you'll be surprised maybe here at the re- at the responses for this. We, um, out of 191,000 votes, 68% would rather always say everything on their mind. 32% said that they would rather never speak again. They are liars. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think they're thinking of the full repercussions. Um, unfortunately, I think that's all the time that we have for that. We are ripping up since we got a... Uh, a late start today, so we're going to move on to uh, our first song of the show, and then we're going to come back and talk about some important things. Then we get up that jazz and cut it. Cut. Um, all right, well, we're bringing back uh, <clears throat> DJ YRS Jersey and Chose Mac to the show today with a track called Embassy Row. Um, they sent this to me a couple weeks back. I've had some other things to play, so I've been playing that, but now we're going to play it. Um, it's a bit of a throwback song. It's... Uh, it's, you know what? It's not my. To be quite honest, it's not my favorite that they've sent me because they've sent me some really good things. Um, but it's still, mm-hmm. still pretty good. I like the some of their more modern, darker stuff. Um, just because I have not been a huge fan of. I don't want to say I'm a fan of modern rap because I'm not. But um, when they try to throw back to sort of even older, um, I, I like like a mid range. I don't even know what I would call it, but I don't love old old school. And this doesn't go too far back, but uh, definitely has a bit of an old school ring to it. But um, it's called Embassy Row. It's another good one. It's DJ YRS Jersey featuring Malik Farid and Chose Mac. Uh, when we're done with this, we will come back. We will have Ross in the show, uh, Karmified, and we will talk about important things, um, important stuffs. So uh, we will be back. Uh, until then, enjoy the song. Positive vibe up in this Malik Farad Yeah Yeah Pulling up Time and time again, I feel like I'm about to blow. blow. TNT, C4, a dynamite. I'm thinking tonight's the night. Tonight's the all night. this hard work will pay off. When you give your artists no days off, I'm just trying to take off. Take, take off. off. This collective energy, the chemistry between my brain and memory, typically hitting me. These thoughts mentally, usually I be drained. Drain. Conflicted with trying, but usually I'm the same. Uh. Day to day fighting, overcoming and striving. I know a lot of things that gave up during the process, but I realized I'm way too hungry not to digest the life I've been. Chasing, I'm far from a diet. Starving for success, though, it's hard for me to let go. They say your dreams are gamble. Well, I'm placing my bets. Well, doing all that I can to involve, to give in. 10,000 hours, man, I'm pushing a thousand again. I've been patient, so the patience a part of suspense. I've been waiting, so the waiting's a part of the mix. And when it comes down to it, I'm prepared to do it. Built to be more and built to influence. Shout out to me, and I'm just working hard to get through it. The road to success ain't easy, but believe me, it'll be worth it as long. As you keep pushing, my time is coming soon. Wonder yeah. if they ready for it. Uh. A recipe for failure so far away from my plate. Uh-huh. Know my ribs would be touching if you told me that's what you ate. And that was all left. Yeah. My last breath would be great. Cause I know I was still grinding when my soul had escaped. Uh-huh. Don't want nobody grieving. Just press repeat on my tapes. Yeah. Still live in a great area praying for clean slates. Praying. These are the breaks. Uh. But my pedal to the metal RPMs. Hot as ever. Half for bangers and you hate. Please, please ain't my fault. My disease ain't contagious. Could go about dummy missions and trips with 
with lost wages. Uh -huh. All due to the grind, and my mind is outrageous. Cause yeah. these bars come from stars, I'll be shining like Vegas. like Vegas. They always told me that this game was a gamble. One uh -huh. minute you could be hot, and then your life is in shambles. Uh -huh. All in all, I still pick up this pen and just ramble. Uh -huh. Count blessings and thankful for mentions of my Twitter handle. Really, I just want to be an example. example. Show them soul, could still go like the chicks in a sample. Uh -huh. 90s flow till forever, hope this warning was ample. Forever. Every beat I ever touch, I try my best to dismantle. I just put it on wax and let it burn like a candle. Uh -huh. I don't need a board meeting, got my niggas on panels. Uh -huh. uh, Y'all can have that crap rap, we just changing the channel. Y'all yeah. can have that crap rap, we just changing the channel. Yeah. Shows. Shows. Northwest began serving peanuts, peanuts this month. Georgia is the top peanut, pr pr peanut producing state. Well, just make your food fresh. At Taco Bell, Taco Bell. When you feel your taste buds tingle, Taco Bell, Taco Bell. Why just make you a burrito or a tasty and chorito? Just starters and taco made up fresh. At Taco Bell, put a smile on your face. At Taco, Taco, Taco Bell. Tomatoes were like black, and tomatoes aren't supposed to be black. You are listening to a Fly Science Productions podcast. Two things I noticed about the commercials I played today. Um, the first one was Nintendo, and I was looking through a couple Nintendo ones. Um, I noticed that every kid in those commercials had like bitchin' set up for their Nintendos. Like, they're, like, mm -hmm. showing the kids, and they're on these huge couches with these massive TV. And one of them, for Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, was literally, like, 20 old, like, uh, what do they call them, CRTVs? Like, huge box TVs. Yeah. All lined up, like, as if it was, like, some big Best Buy thing, just next to each other, playing, like, Nintendo. And I'm like, damn, I never had that in my house. <laughs> um <laughs> And then Taco Bell talking about how fresh their food looked. And I'm like, you know what? Taco Bell is not a place I go to because the food looks good. Taco Bell is yeah. a place I go to because I'm like, you know what? It's going to taste all right. And then I, <laughs> I eat it. And that's. And you're like, man, I get Taco Bell entirely too often. <laughs> Taco, like, I'm not going to lie. Taco Bell is like right down the street from work. So if I don't pack a lunch, it's usually, if I take a lunch, that's usually where I go. We, um, yeah, we go there. Probably once a week. We have some other places. We'll do McDonald's or Subway or Wendy's. The Taco Bell is also a KFC, so sometimes we'll have some some KFC. Speaking of KFC. Carmified correspondent? Yes. So now we have our Carmified correspondent. He's coming in right now. We'll go ahead and play his theme as we add him to the show. Well, and then I'll fondle, fumble both. <laughs> <laughs> And then I'll fumble with the videos for a second. <laughs> Ross is, you know, be distinguished, careful, got his big old beard. It's not going to be easy, but it will be worth it. There's amazing things going on every day. It may not be good, but I'm expensive. <laughs> it's Ross and I, and then a bunch of women. Don't let society tell you what to do. He has the power. Brody. Hold on, this isn't doing... <laughs> I gotta edit... The, hold on. Live editing. Live editing. I'm gonna fix this. Now Tony's face is cut off. Here we go. Oh, this is perfect. We're almost there. Ladies and gentlemen. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. Hold on. Hold on. We're almost done. We're almost done. Move to the top. Da, 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 da. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted. Um, order. There we go. Move to top. Boom. Oh, not quite. So what's up, Ross? <laughs> Yo, what's up, Tony? <laughs> I'm there to teach you, bro. Oh, uh, here we go. <laughs> Boom. Oh, my shit. Oh, God damn it. Hold on. We're almost you guys there. in your wooden desks looking all fancy. <laughs> you know, it's gonna have some wine, maybe a little bucket of chicken. Alrighty. See oh my, my glass. My desk is see through, and if you could see my desk, which means you could see my legs underneath, and maybe I'm not wearing pants. Cause maybe it's <laughs> that way. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm wearing be. pants. Uh, welcome, welcome. You know welcome. what? Welcome to the show, Ross. Let me play your. Uh... Put some of your ham in here. That's Ross from. Uh, it's from many shows ago. If you have, no one remembers, um, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? 
I'm doing well. It's Saturday. Got my coffee. I actually do have pants on, which isn't a win, but I'll take it. Uh, so, um, See? pants. Oh, there it is. He's proved us wrong. Um, so that's what he must have been putting on during the break because I noticed uh, he covered the camera for a split second. So it's probably so he <laughs> yep. throw some shorts on. Um, all right. Well, two two milestones for us today. This is the first show we, that we've all had video, so this is great. Uh, welcome everybody to the new stream the machine. Um, and secondly, I noticed you have a mic stand, a mic, uh, mic holder, a mic something. Um, yeah, it looks nice from what I can it's see not from bad. here. You know, you kind of motivated me with your little Steven Tyler setup there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like the bandana and the whole nine yards. So I figured well, instead of using this little cheap thing, I needed something that would match my nice fancy wooden desk. It looks, you know, what it looks real nice. So mine's fancy. Mine still gets in the way of things, unfortunately. Um, and the reason I've got the bandana on it is really not a fashion statement, but. Um, <laughs> The way I used to to have this, I had it kind of straight up, and the the mic wouldn't fall out. But then when I did it this way, so I wouldn't have the the stand getting in my way, um, the mic can f- like slip right out of this thing. I, I taped it, but it started to slip. So what did I do? I took my bandana and I looped it around and tied it on here, and that way uh, the mic itself cannot fall. So really, it's not me trying to make a fashion statement. It's just <laughs> me trying to. Uh, not spend money on more rigging so I can continue to do what I'm doing. Anyways, welcome to the show. Our Twitch stream looks tacky as hell. I'm going to have to figure out how to fix yeah. this stuff. Um, just because it's a stupid mini cam thing or that's messing me up because I can't use multiple cams for the show. I don't know. Anyways, we'll figure this out uh, on a later date. Um, we have important topics we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks. I think this is week three. That uh, I think so. Yeah, week three maybe. Yeah. That we have stuff coming that's what up. The notes say. So, uh, well, the notes say week three. I don't know if that's true. I wrote it down, guessing that it was week three. Um, what do you have for us today? Uh, on next on our list of things that we haven't mentioned yet. Well, today uh, I don't think will be too, too, too deep. Uh, but I think it'll, if anything, it'll just, it'll be a cause for discussions, which is kind of why we do this. Yes. So I think today's rough theme is mm-hmm. kind of starts off with teenagers. I mean, we've Alrighty. all been teenagers at one point. Uh, uh, if I remember and we'll correctly, just kind of see yes. where it goes from there. So the first question, which I will extend to Tony, because I, Tony, I think you're closer to being a teenager. Is that right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> closer than I am, at least, but not by much. I, I'm almost, I'm almost 13. <laughs> I'm almost there. I'm almost there. <laughs> Little so, Jimmy DeFranco. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So, all right. So the first question is: Do curfews keep teens out of trouble? Um. See, when I was a teenager and living at home, I didn't do anything on the weekends anyway. <laughs> like, I was kind of. I had a girlfriend who literally lived down the street from me. Nice. Damn, so, that's like, nice. I would just hang out at her parents' house or she would hang out over here. Um, and I was kind of whipped. So <laughs> I didn't do much else besides that. Okay. But I would still say to a degree it can because – the later it gets, obviously, like if stuff's going on, the crazier it can, crazier it can get. Point. But it's not going to like teenagers are going to be teenagers, and if they want to get in trouble, they're going to get in trouble, <laughs> right? Regardless of what time it is, right? Because like parents, parents' definition of trouble is their definition of fun, <laughs> in a lot of cases. So, I mean, it'll probably it'll just push the fun to different hours of the day. Okay. All right, so if there was, let's say there's a there's a small town that has some general trouble with teenagers, and they decide they're either going to do a curfew or not. You'd say oh, we're talking want- like we're talking city curfew. Oh or like yeah. Curfew? Oh, they exist. I mean, those exist. I I didn't live in yeah. the town, but the the town outside the um the school I went to definitely had a curfew because I because even when well I think it was only for certain ages, but yeah. I mean, I don't think Peoria does, but Princeville definitely did. See, that's like, I grew up in a town of 950, and I wasn't even in the town, so I was like right. out in the middle of nowhere. So like, curfew is just like, 
honestly, besides parental curfews, it just wasn't a thing because you could. Yeah. We didn't have a local police force, so like, kind of get get away with a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. But I would say that no, it would so, just make him get in trouble for breaking curfew. Okay. <laughs> just cause more trouble. <laughs> All right, so what about you, Jake? Do curfews keep teens out of trouble? Um, hmm. uh, are we are we still talking about city city curfews or? Okay, well let me let me let me alter it just a little bit for the sake of the discussion. How about if you have like if a teen has a curfew, will they get in trouble less than someone than not having a curfew? I suppose it depends on the house and and I don't mean that like figuratively like the house is in like, you know, oh it decides on the, the parents. I mean it does, but literally it depends on the house. I could not escape out of my house if I wanted to. Just because of the way it was built, you know, like yeah. the door was where it was and it squeaked and my windows were awful for trying to get out and it just it didn't work. But I know people who have houses where that are I guess great for sneaking out of. Um, that was mine. So, um, sure. I think it, well, it, it's going to vary from per- person to person, but let's assume that both people are inclined to go out if there was no curfew. Okay. I would say that the one with the curfew, uh, I don't know, depending on whether or not he expected the cur- or respected the curfew. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I stayed in the house when I had when my parents didn't let me go out. So did I – I never really got into trouble, though, when I when I didn't have a curfew. So I don't, I don't know if I'm a great answer. I would say curfews, I think, do help. But it's only – it's like the argument with um, – well, well, I'm trying to think if there really is another argument. Um, ah, shoot. I can't think of anything to relate it to. Like but here's yeah, here's I, what I, I it, was thinking when I was when I was imagining this to see kind of where I stood. I imagined two towns exactly the same, and then you have teenagers in both towns. One town has a nine o'clock curfew, and one has no curfew. And I wanted, and I was trying to think, okay, well, would one town be more in trouble? Hmm. I I don't know. It's getting tough because it's it depends on how many of those kids see the curfew as a reason to rebel and cause trouble, and how many people, you know. So, you know, if, if the town has a curfew, are people going to be saying, "What? That's stupid! I'm freaking leaving my house, and I'm going to go do something crazy," you know, like. Um, because of the curfew, they can't control me. I know exactly. Yeah. Like, are, are you gonna? Are they gonna lash out and then do crazy stuff because of the curfew? In which case, does not having a curfew mean, um, you know that if they were just out, they'd be like, "Well, this is boring" because we can be out here. That you know, it would be. Uh, I don't know. This is a tough one. I'm not sure. I would. I'm. I'm erring on the side of yes. I feel like a curfew probably would overall prevent some trouble uh okay. you know it's like a net it's not going to catch everybody but it probably would catch the ones that it could i guess meaning like the people whose parents would be super strict about it or the houses that you couldn't sneak out of or whatever those people i don't know i don't know i really don't that's a good question i i'm i am really kind of torn i'm not sure because then if you sort of you know decriminalize it in a way it's it's not really a criminal thing but if you make it so it's not something that people are getting in trouble for are people going to be outrageous and doing crazy you know is it going to be freaking project mayhem out there you know people just tearing shit up i i I don't know i don't think so well i don't know that's a great question i am legitimately unable to really come with to 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 a definite definitive answer for this in my okay. opinion. See, when I was a t- like 15, and I wanted to like go TP someone's house because <laughs> someone TP'd mine. Mm-hmm. I didn't sneak out. I was just like, hey, dad, 
I can't drive and I want to go TP someone's house. <laughs> I told, like I told my mom and dad, I was like, like, this is what I want to do. This is with me and my friends. We're not going to like, obviously it's getting in trouble, but it's not like sneaking out and drink, doing like participating in anything like substance related. Right. And I was like, we just like, we just want to lift. And my mom was like, well, I'm glad you told me. And so then my dad drove us, <laughs> like my dad drove us to this house. We unloaded, got a bunch of toilet paper out of the trunk and just pre- proceeded to <laughs> get revenge. Awesome. And then he fe- he parked the car down the street, fell asleep. So when we were done, we just walked over there, knocked on the window and he rolled out. I was like, Sweet. My dad would not like, have done that. That's <laughs> get it. Yeah. Mine either. Yeah. Get away, dad. <laughs> That's great. Hmm. Wow. I didn't expect that. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. That's, that's an, it was an inter- that's an interesting thing. Now, I will say, when I had my curfew removed, I did stay out longer. I did, I yeah. did take, oops, sorry, I'm hitting my mic here, amateur. Um, I did, I did take advantage of it because I had friends that were a little bit older than me. And so when I hung out with them, um, you know, it was nice to be able to stay out till midnight or something. And I was coming home by choice because I had work early as heck the next morning. So I had to be home by a, a reasonable time so I could sleep. But, um, yeah, I don't know. That was a really interesting one. I'm unsure. It kind of ties in with this next one. Cause I guess, I mean, these both are, are the general idea of, of keeping teenagers out of trouble. And I know Tony, you you're kind of a sports guy. And Jake, did you play sports when you were in school? A little bit. I played a lot of basketball, a lot of track, if you want to call that a sport. Um, very, very, very briefly pay, played uh, football, and I did okay. golf for one year, one season. Oh, I would call drama club more of a sport than <laughs> golf. That's just <laughs> me. <laughs> All right. So the next one is: uh, Does participation in sports? help to keep teens out of trouble. Tony, I'm going to start with you again. Um, I would, I would say majority of the time, yeah. Because, I mean, you don't want to get, like, when you're on a team, you're on a team to play mm-hmm. for the most part. You're not on the team just like, man, I think running and practicing is really fun. <laughs> like, I love being right. out of breath. <laughs> um, so like they participate to play, and they they know for the most part that if they get in trouble, they're not they might not be able to play. Mm, like, okay. So I would say yeah. Obviously, like people like Johnny Menzel, like going out and go, I know who that is. That's how pathetic I am. He's the, <laughs> right now he's the he's the Browns like backup quarterback, but he was like the Heisman Trophy winner last year. Okay. Crazy partier, mm. and which kind of like gets them in a little trouble. It's like obviously, like the more I would say for teenagers that yeah, being involved in like high school sports keeps you out of trouble because it's something to do after school. Yeah, instead of doing whatever. Yeah, but so I would, I would agree with that statement. Okay, what about that. you, Jake? Does participation in sports help to keep teens out of trouble? <sighs> um, part of me agrees with what Tony said. Yes, same kind of the same thing with the. Uh, oh, my contact is killing me today. Kind of the same thing with the um, the curfew. If you've got something there to prevent something else from happening, it's going to catch some people and prevent them from doing what they're doing. However, I know plenty of people I went to school with. I knew plenty of people that you know. Uh, People I know I've went to school with, family members I've gone to school with, who, as Tony said, are just that's like that's like part of the lifestyle, you know. If you're a jock, you have to be doing some crazy stuff, and yeah, um, you know. So I do. I I almost think that depending on what kind of impressionable person you are, sports can encourage that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're a, I don't know. It, it mostly seems to happen with football. Um, a lot with basketball too. I, I we didn't have a huge baseball team, so I can't speak for the same to say if I think baseball players seem to be big partiers. But between basketball players and football players, it seems to be a big thing. Um, 
And also we're now, I mean, when you say keep, what was the question? Do sports keep kids out of trouble? Does participation in sports help to keep teens out of trouble? Teens. Okay. Mm-hmm. So if we're speaking of teens, I guess I'm going to assume that um, we are not talking about college sports in any way. We're only going to be talking about high school sports. Yeah, just high school. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm also going to say that I think uh, that it could make it worse because when you become a fo- uh, uh, any kind of sports player and you're good, you start to. De- I mean, as a, as a as a teenager, as a kid, as a whatever, you already develop a sense of immortality. A sense of, mm. I can do what I want because I can't. I don't understand the world. You know, I don't understand how it works. I don't understand the fact that legitimately, me and my dad driving to Sunday school, we could be killed on the way by a drunk driver or whatever. Like, there's so many wrong things that can happen in the world that you don't process at that kind of an age. And so, what you get is a false sense of, doesn't matter what I do because I am in control. And when you're on a sports team, you get, and like I said, and you're good, and let's say you're at a big school. You almost get like a celebrity kind of status, you know. Like mm, I've seen yeah. schools where kids are like in shock to talk to these people because they're the quarterback of the football team or the yeah. the point guard or what you know. Like it's and it's it's almost like shocking to be like, really? Like you go to school with that guy? You guys are both the same age. <laughs> you guys have both had the same education. He might be dumber than you, and you're like. You know, could be smarter than him. I'm not saying jocks are dumb, but I'm like, you could be. You're like on equal playing ground with this guy almost, and you're, you're he's he's like a like a academic celebrity to you because of mm. football teams. Anyways, and we all know that celebrities think they're untouchable, and it just it. I think that that mindset could help add to them already as a, as a kid, as a teen, as um, a younger person saying, I can kind of do what I want. Now, I've got teachers saying, you know, like, uh, the reason I brought up college was because it is a problem in college. Athletes do think that they're invincible. They think that, you know, because for a large part, they kind of are. Schools don't want to lose their star players, so they let things slide. They don't get great grades. They don't, you know, they do these things, crazy things that, we, you know, we don't even have to mention that have happened um, you know, that just seem unspeakable to us, but because they're athletes, they, they get to, they get to sweep it under the rug. Um, and I don't think that that happens in high school. I don't think there's any big scandals happening, but I definitely think that that mindset can, can start there though, and lead to more issues. So again, I'm kind of in the, in the middle of the, on the fence here of saying, okay. yeah, the net would catch some, but I think that if you if you become like a serial sports player now it was it, like for a person like me, sure I guess because I never became that meathead jock. Um, but for some other people I know, sports really you know kind of got to their head and gave them that extra push to become the person who could do what they wanted. And yeah, yeah, and you know I talk to my wife about things like this from time to time, and I know generally where she gets caught up is she she kind of has the the all or nothing mindset of, well, it's either going to keep all of them out of the trouble or it won't keep any of them out of trouble. But I think that generally my opinion for the most part is that if a school has sports activities available to teens, it's it, it's just one more thing in the arsenal of – I think it teaches kids a little bit of discipline. It teaches them teamwork, teaches them respect. Um, and I've never been a sports guy. I mean, I played little league as a kid, but, right. um, I understand the team mentality. And I think that if I like where I come from, there is literally nothing to do. I mean, there's sports in school, but there is nothing to do outside of school activities. So there's a huge drug problem. Now there's heroin problems. And when you don't give kids an outlet, especially mm-hmm. some type of like physical or, or emotional outlet, they're going to find something else to do. And it's usually worse. So my opinion goes, it's going to save more than not. Sure. Sure. Yeah, and I, I didn't mean to say that, like you know, every every person that joins a sports league or whatever is going to become your next, you know, name five different NFL people that have done shitty things this year. You know, I, like I'm 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 not saying that that's going to happen. There, it definitely, I think the positive out, outweigh the negatives. But yeah, I, I do think that there will there are people that come from it 
that gained an even further sense of power because they oh, are absolutely. the star of the team, you know, and they're Yeah. And at that age, like I said, at that age you don't know, you know? And so then mm-hmm. you start you start young and whatever. Anyways, answer the question. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to <laughs> didn't tangent any, any further. Like you're talking about like people being good. The people who are good only get treated like celebrities if they score. Yeah. Like the the team could be filled with good people, like really good players, mm-hmm. but they only pay attention to who puts points on the board. So mm, I feel like interesting. Yeah. Like I was, I was a captain, both junior and senior years. I was all conference, both both defense and offense both years, and but I was a lineman, mm. and everybody was like, "Oh yeah, good job!" But they're like, "You didn't, you didn't, you didn't see me." I was hitting people. <laughs> Right in the yeah. big mass of people. You weren't watching me. <laughs> we were watching you at the ball. Uh, that's but like, that's yeah, a good I point. I can't agree that like, like some people can be treated like celebrities. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, part of the culture. Yeah. All right, so the next one, we'll start with you, Jake. Um, should the alcohol drinking age be increased or decreased? Oh, boy. Um... Hmm. Should the alcohol age be increased or this really almost falls along the lines of well shit. Now for our international listeners, the drinking age in America is twenty one. <laughs> Just FYI. <laughs> Dang, you are bringing a lot of ones that I can't I can't decide <laughs> on today. I can't if you okay um i feel like if it were be were to be lowered let me let me try and piece this out if it were to be lowered you would decrease obviously the amount of underage drinking just because of of like semantics it would no longer be underage drinking it still would happen but you could now legally do it um Again, I'm falling back on the fact that kids are basically morons until, you know, probably age 25 and even older. But like, it, it, we're all we're all stupid. It's one of the first things you learn in psychology is that you don't fully develop until easily into your mid 20s, and even then, you're constantly developing. Um, so, I don't think lowering the drinking age would. You know, it wouldn't have the effect of, oh, well, if they were introduced to alcohol sooner, maybe they'd learn a little bit sooner. Nope, kids don't learn. Like, people don't learn. Teenagers don't learn. Young adults don't learn. Like, it, you know, I, mm-hmm. I've been through a lot of... Learn. Right. I, I mean, it takes... You really have to F up hard to learn early yeah. on. Um, and the the smaller amount... Uh, the smaller amount... Or the smaller the uh, gravita of the... F up, the more times you'll have to do it before you realize, like, hey, this is bad. But, um, so I think lowering it would not be the right thing to do. Now, whether or not it needs to be raised, I'm trying to think of what that would fix. Um, Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I'd be okay with seeing it raised just because I hate drunk people walking out of bars and barfing on my porch. So <laughs> yeah. if people were drinking in their house to get away from the cops, fine. I would be okay with it. Um, so I don't know. Do I, I don't know. I don't have an opinion of whether or not it really should be raised or lowered. But if I had to have one or the other, I would say raised. I think it should be raised. I think they should be older before they had to drink alcohol. I don't think it would stop okay. people from drinking alcohol sooner or anything like that. I just – I would much rather see it raised than lowered. OK. So let's say for the sake of this this question, let's say that whatever the drinking age is, there's absolutely 100 percent everybody abides by it, <laughs> period. <laughs> huh? Ah, uh, weird. Um, if everybody ab- – I would still rather see it raised because people could still do some dumb shit as as youngins. Um, how 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 low are we thinking? Are we thinking like twenty? Are we thinking? Is it 
I mean, because uh, when well, I'm no, thinking, some countries are 18. I think I think uh, the United Kingdom is 18. For that's example. what I was thinking it would go to to uh, 18. I know. I think a friend of mine went to Jamaica somewhere, and I think the drinking age might have been 16. Um, yeah, and I think it's even a couple European countries that don't have a drinking age, and they say statistically that there's there's no like drinking problem because hmm. kids try it with the young. They're like, "Oh, this is terrible! Why am I putting this in my mouth?" Right. I mean, metaphorically speaking, but right. Yeah. Interesting. Um. Hmm. 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 I don't know. You stumped me. I want Tony to answer a little bit because I am. All right, Tony, go for it, bro. I'm in the middle right. at the moment. Um, I can see pros and cons to both sides. Um, I feel like one way or another, people are going to have an issue no matter what because people just like to argue about stuff. Um, see, I like I I drank before I was twenty one, but not till literally this time last year. So I was twenty one, like twenty and a half. Okay. Like you could round up if you really wanted to. Um, <laughs> I'm sure the cops would have done that as well. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, wow. he's pretty close. Just, when it, I mean, and when it was, it was like in my own house, like with my roommates. Um. But I. I don't know, like, because all my friends, like in college and they all like drank and stuff. And I went like, I went to stuff places with them where they would drink, but I just wouldn't not because it was illegal, but just because it just wasn't my thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe if I would probably say lower it mm-hmm. just because like I, I'm not involved in this. I know you are, but I mean, if you can sign up to serve your country, I feel like you should be able to have a beer. Have a beer. Yeah. Like that's a lot more responsibility fighting for your country than it is having a beer. Well, and if people think they're responsible enough to go to combat, I feel yeah. like they should also have faith that that same person is responsible enough to consume alcoholic beverages Okay. You okay? So you have a point there. I'm not going to fight you on that one because you you do have a point. I'm going to say that using that as an example um, to say if this person has enough responsibility to put their life on the line, they should have enough responsibility to have a beer. I would argue that not everyone has the responsibility or the uh, whatever you want to call it the. Uh, maturity to sign up for the military and that's why those people don't and they don't do it at 18 so to say that maybe because this person is ready and can can have a beer you know it i i it, it doesn't necessarily apply to everybody but that's that's exactly the situation for anything it doesn't have to be you don't have to use the military example it's lowering the driving age or lowering the, the drinking age yeah some people are going to be ready for it some people aren't you know because some people are just going to be party animals, regardless of, I mean, again, using the military example, regardless if they're in the military or not. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm stuck on it. And I am, <laughs> I am stuck on, you were saying, so, I mean, you mentioned briefly, uh, statistics, and I'm sure you don't have a ton of them, like, at the, at the ready, but, I mean, I nope, do- I'd make them up as I go. <laughs> <laughs> um, does it seem like a lower drinking age has, Let's see. Lower. Type this in. Lower drinking age statistics. I want to see if if there's any kind of news for this here. Um. And of course, let's see. Weird. Okay, so I didn't know this. This is kind of a little off topic, but underage drinking is allowed in 29 states if done on private premises with parental consent. That's interesting. Under 21. 25 states if for religious purposes, and 11 states if for educational purposes. All right, if you're going to drink Jesus, you can do it on your property. <laughs> what? 
Uh, well, and you know what? We did it for, um, we did it for, uh, black belt ceremonies back in, back in Illinois. Um, if we had parental you black belt, you have a glass of vodka. <laughs> if we had, if we had parental consent, when we had a, um, a ceremony, everyone was allowed to drink some of the sake. Um, oh, okay. if you had parental consent, now he didn't even give an option to people that were under like the age of 15. If you were 15 or 16, you had to have parental consent. If you were like 12, obviously he wasn't yeah. like, here, yeah, you can have some, um, chug, chug, chug. let me see here. Uh, trying to see if there's any standout. I don't know. I can't find anything. It says there are fewer drunk driving traffic accidents and fatalities in many countries with a low drinking or with a drinking age of 18. Mm. Okay. Wait, can you repeat that statistic for me? I just want to hear how they word it. The, there are fewer drunk driving traffic accidents and fatalities in many countries. So not all, but many. With a drinking age of 18 versus 21 in the United States. See, the problem I have with that is it's not percentage of the population. It's just total number of accidents. Our population is in way bigger than a lot of those That's true. other countries. So it could be much smaller based on another country having a fraction. So I'm, I'm glad you yeah. were able to find that. I mean, so this site's actually so interesting. Like, it's drinkingage.procon.org. And mm. it has a huge mm. pro con list of lower drinking ages. I'm not gonna, <coughs> not gonna go through any others, but um um interesting. Anyways. Uh yeah, wow. I, I have nothing. That was more. a lot deeper than I thought it was gonna go. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. That's I mean that's what it's for. I think we have to you know, for... I, I my my first thought was kind of what Tony said was, you know, if if you're saying that this individual is responsible enough and we trust them enough to pick up a gun and fight for the country, why can't they pick up a beer and enjoy beer? But the same way that Jake, you said, well, What's right for one person is not necessarily right for the other person. And me going through the Marine Corps, I'm going to tell you right now that an 18-year-old with alcohol, oh, my God, it is ridiculous. I mean, these guys are jumping off the third floor of a building onto some trash cans and saying it's backyard wrestling. And, right. I mean, you got guys stabbing each other. I mean, it's crazy. But – I would almost be interested to see, even if you just tried it on base, take a base like Camp Lejeune in North Carolina, one of the biggest Marine Corps bases that they have, and say the drinking age on base for enlisted personnel is 18, okay? And then if you have a – let's say you have an alcohol-related incident. It goes on your license, and then if you get like, I don't know, two of them or three of them or whatever the case might be, then your drinking age is no longer legal until you're 21. Hmm. You know, and just see what happens. I mean, it's it's base-wide. It's never going to happen. It's just hypothetical. But I would be interested to see because you're right. There are some real turd biscuits that will push that limit and ruin it for everybody else. But there's a lot of people that don't drink at all. And if they want to go out and have a couple drinks, that should be allowed on base within that safe area, you know? Right. Um, definitely an interesting way to break it down. Um, you know, it, for me, it's – it's it, it's in the middle just because uh, drinking has not really been. I mean, it's been a problem with prior generations of of family, but I personally have not had drinking problems. My parents have not had drinking problems. Um, so for us, there's really no major desire to to drink. So whether there's a change in age, you know, whether yeah. I was 17 or whether I'm 24 now, don't know if it really would have affected me much. Um, so it's hard for me, me to give an opinion because. I it wouldn't have affected me. So yeah, sure, I'm yeah. either way. But since I'm not involved, you know, or like I said, it wouldn't have been a major thing for me as a, as a as a whatever an 18 year old. You know, I, it's hard for me to give a valid opinion on it. I can give an opinion as a bystander, and that's it. I'm glad I'm going to be above 21 tonight for this Christmas party. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, we'll definitely need some kind of alcohol to, to make any of it bearable. But 
Nine more years. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm almost a teenager. Oh, boy. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate your thoughts and your discussion today. I think it was interesting. Uh, yeah, definitely. That was... <clears throat> they were, you know, those... Uh, those were good. It's they're different than the violence in video games type or the global warming type, the kind that you know affects like us. I mean, drinking age and stuff like that does affect us on a whole. But there are questions that you don't actually really think about. We kind of take them for granted, you know. Stuff like violence in video games, or uh, trying to think of some of the others we've talked about, um, global warming, and I don't know stuff like that. Those are hot yes. topics that a lot of people talk about constantly. Whereas you know stuff like drinking age or what else did we mention today the sports and the the curfews we, i mean that's yeah, not curfews. something that i've even heard about in years being talked about as a topic so it definitely was interesting to sort of to revisit those and you know see what kind of thing it it brought up so um appreciate you coming on the show ross we'll uh of course reconvene tonight and try to make the best of everything um sounds good Appreciate you having you, and we will see you next week. All right, see you, fellas. And he disappears, and now I have to play this little game where I try to realign everything, make it look good. Let's make it look pretty. Remove him. Pretty mouth. All right, and we've got Tony back, and we're gonna throw this to here. And we'll make you smaller. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to fix this idea by next show because this is awful. This, this has to be done every time. Just a little bit more, just a little bit more. We're almost there and we're done. All right. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for listening in to the show today. It's been a wonderful time to have everyone back on the show. I have everyone's first video podcast. Wish So we switched. we switched from Google Hangouts. Google Hangouts worked amazingly last week. Um, it would have been great for today, except that, um, it was causing weird echo issues with Ross's, uh, audio. It was giving him echo throughout the entire show. And that's awful for anyone who has ever had to deal with listening to an echo of their own voice while they're trying to record. It's terrible. It also produced a really awful YouTube video that uh, the audio for the YouTube video was really compressed. So I'm, I am going to upload the video for this um episode um on youtube but it will be with the audio from the twitch feed and it will sound a thousand times better so um anyways thank you for listening in if you want to figure out how you can help out the show um tell your friends about us i already said at the top of the show but uh tell everybody hey I listen to this really cool podcast uh, check it out um share the stuff on the twitter share the stuff on the uh facebook page in fact um if you're looking for extra work someone could run the twitter page if they wanted to <laughs> because i never based on it um you can support us by sponsoring a segment you can find out more about that on the website or by supporting the patreon page um you can go there you don't even have to uh, commit to any money just be a supporter that helps out everybody um email in your music or if you know people that have music email that in um, tell them to email their music and we'd love to get it on the show uh you can follow tony on twitter at tony de palma 51 i'm trying to find ways to get back into twitter at some point um i don't know how i don't know what i'd say i I say stuff on facebook but i don't usually it's big posts about games and stuff and it wouldn't fit in 140 characters so i don't know um i've been a little more involved with twitter recently but 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 prior to this like really my only ever twitter twitter interaction was a guy i went to high school with who lives like two hours away now (laughs) but i just think it's funny (laughs) Uh, that's great um, I quote, I quote Key and Peel every now and then, just because I've been watching a bunch of that. They are hilarious, dude. One of my favorite, like internet. Because I mean, they're you on don't com- messed up, AA Ron. <laughs> they're so. on Comedy Central, but I feel like they have a huge presence on YouTube because that's where I see all their yeah. stuff. Since I don't have Comedy Central, so um, yeah, they're I don't have TV in general. <sighs> yeah, nobody does anymore, man. It's a Age of technology, we're moving forward, and everyone's watching their stuff on computers now, and it's the way to be, man. Uh, it's a lot cheaper, that's for certain. Um, so you can follow the show at STM Podcast. Uh, website is streamthemachine.com. Find out uh, more about the show. Go back and listen to prior shows if you have not uh, listened to episodes before this one. Uh, I want to thank everybody for the help. Uh, Tony, as always, for being a great co-host. Um, 
Ross for always bringing great uh, segments to the show, important things. My contact has been an- just annihilating my eyeball the entire show. I cannot stop messing with it. It's irritating me. Um, next week, 10.30 a.m., as always, episode 35. Tony, in th- almost three months, the show will have been going on for a year. We will be at our That's one year. So I didn't realize that. Let me let me count this out. We might reach our one year anniversary before we'll reach the anniversary of the show. Um, or sorry, before we'll reach the fiftieth. Let's find out. So maybe thirty five, thirty six, thirty seven, thirty eight, thirty nine is on the tenth of January. Forty, forty one, forty two, forty three, forty. Hold on. Forty four, <coughs> forty five, forty six, forty six on the twenty eighth of February. 47, 48, 49, 50 on the 20. <gasps> Hold on a second. Let's go back and figure out when our first episode was. If it was on, it probably wasn't on the 28th, but I bet you it was damn close. Our 50th episode is going to be our one year anniversary, I think. And <laughs> considering how many shows we've missed, that means that we cannot miss another show, though, <laughs> in the next however That's many true. months. I'm going to have to come on and do stuff if one of us is missing. Um,. First show, first show, first show. Um, really, this wasn't the first episode. First episode here says four twelve, or no, four five. Oh, it's because it's never mind. It's because it's organized by. So March thirty second. Okay, so now let me go back and check. Did you say March thirty second? Sorry, twenty second. Twenty second. <laughs> Okay, so like, here's I mean, that's not the here's the thing. Episode forty nine is going to be one day before our one year anniversary. Episode fifty, episode fifty will be uh, just about um, six days after our. So what we're going to do is we're going to try, I guess, and match episode fifty and our one year up. I will do the best that I can to make sure that we have a show. <laughs> Every week. We usually miss about one show a month, I think. And it, whether it's between one of us being busy or a lot of times I just want a day off. And so we can relax because, uh, you know, getting up early on a day that you're supposed to be sleeping in sometimes can can be exhausting. But, uh, oh boy, we'll figure it out because now that seems like a great idea to have our 50th and our one year line up on the same, their same show. So um, we'll figure that out. Anyways, uh, that's the end of our show. Uh, I've got a song here. I hate holiday music. I'm just going to say it straight up front. I don't care for it. I don't. I just don't care. It's. Uh, I, I'm kind of picky about my music, and then when you're going to tell me that there's music that is based solely around a holiday and sounds a certain way, it's just more music I don't like. But, but um, in the interest of the general public, I'm going to play a Christmas song today. And I will, from here until Christmas, try to play at least one Christmas song at the end of the show every week. So, um, This is a cover of The First Noel. Uh, by a band called The Little Things That Kill. Um, it is off an album called Cover Club, Christmas Candy from the Netherlands. These are Dutch um, indie artists that have sang uh, Christmas tunes. So that is what we have for you today. Next week we will have more things, um, including more Christmas music. And hopefully I will have this camera situation figured out so we can look a little better next time. Tony, thanks for being on the show, man. It's always great to have you here. It's always great to do a show. I like having a camera so I can do like... So now we can do this, things and we can... Like, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't always have to be an audio response. Um, I, I can say bye to Ross just by waving. And just waving. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we will be back next week. That's not even biblical. I know, but uh, we're going to do it anyways. We're going to do it. I'm sorry, Jesus. But uh, we will be back, even though Jesus doesn't want us to do a show. This is The Little Things That Kill and The First Noel. Um, we'll be back next week. Have a great weekend. Later.
The angels did say Was to Satan Poor shepherds In fields As they lay In fields Where they Lay hiding Their sheep On a cold Winter's night That was So dear exhausting and it was mostly because of that stupid camera situation